Okay, this has uh, been a journey, certainly. Uh, this project is sort of and not sponsored by JLCPCB. Um, when I started this project, this was actually the very last project that I was working on, uh, right before they had uh, contacted me saying that they would no longer be able to sponsor me. So they provided all the PCBs for this project, the stencil, all of that, um, but I'm not going to be paid to actually make this video, but I... I really wanted to produce this video because this was actually a, uh, a project that I, that I updated from before that I just want to get out there. It's in a much more useful state. I wish I could find, I'm, I'm at my new house, so I haven't unpacked everything yet. And I, I had the older version of the remote somewhere. I don't know where it is right now. It's in a box somewhere, but anyway, uh, yeah. So basically introducing the, uh, the remote Duino Nano as uh, evidenced by the the uh, shiny lettering on the side there. Uh, this is a tiny version of the original Remote Duino that I made. Uh, that one was pretty chunky. It was more of a development board for me. Uh, this is backwards hardware compatible. Um, well, actually backwards software and hardware compatible uh, with a added feature. Uh, it does have an IR receiver, so I'm planning on writing software so that you could point a remote at this while like holding a button and it'll program that button to whatever command that it received uh, via its IR port. So you could basically clone any remote without a computer. And I was planning on having that saved to internal eScore prom. So that, that's coming in the future. Um, I have to do some more software writing and whatnot. So, um, as you guys saw, I stenciled this, I, I soldered it all together. Uh, it did not work the first time, and uh, I think it was actually maybe two things. So what would happen was it looked like the software was running. I'd press a button, and then this transistor would get super hot, and uh, it wouldn't accept any other button presses. I thought it was maybe the software uh, because I had updated the library, so I downgraded the library to the same version that I wrote for the previous uh, Remote Duino, and that didn't work either, which made no sense because I didn't change the hardware or software, really. And so what it ended up being, I think, one of two things. Um, I moved to this tiny little uh, QFN package for the uh, AT Mega, and... Uh, I think maybe there was a short, so I reflowed this a few times. I went in with an iron and some extra flux. And also, um, I had a short originally at the uh, 100 ohm resistor mark there. And I assumed that um, on the previous version, I think I did actually short that out and it was just fine. Uh, but here, apparently, uh, when I add a little bit of resistance, right now I have 47 ohms. 100 was a bit too constraining it didn't transmit very far only like two feet or something like that uh so i decreased it to 47 ohms and now this works it doesn't lock up the processor nothing breaks nothing gets hot so i don't know if it was either that resistor or that when i do short the resistor with tweezers while i'm using it it does stop working again so i'm guessing it's something weird with browning out the processor and maybe some of the leads were shorted uh, on this tiny little chip here so anyway i fixed those problems i loaded some test uh, software on here right now this is just emulating a sony remote because i have uh two sony tvs now i have the crt and i have a uh, a flat screen up upstairs in my room um so i wanted to set this up uh to use with the um, the CRT down here because I don't have a remote with it. I, um, I picked that up. It was by the side of the road near my work and they threw it out, no remote in sight. So I have no way of remotely controlling that TV. So I wanted to make a spare remote for it basically. So that's what this is going to serve as like a Sony remote. Anyway, uh, take you around here. Uh, this time I opted for the crystal. Um, the last version just used the internal uh, RC oscillator inside the chip. Uh, I think maybe adding a crystal technically draws a little more power, but uh, it should wake up faster because of that. Because um, I was reading a bit on uh, power saving techniques, uh, booting up the processor, uh, especially if it has to start up. Um, like the internal RC can take quite a bit of time. So having double the clock speed on this crystal might help. I don't know. I have to do measurements on power consumption to see if that'll really help. Um, we have the power switch, so you can manually disconnect the battery if you're not going to use it for a long time, so it doesn't keep draining it. Uh, the standby time on this was actually pretty good. I, I think I measured it. It was in the low microamps, so should be able to last like quite a while, like a year or two on a, uh, a CR2032 battery. 
uh, even if if it's just in standby and you're not clicking a button uh, the new biggest addition is this tiny little uh, like three or four pin well I guess the shielding is an extra pin so four pin uh, IR receiver I'm not sure what brand this is I pulled this off of another device like a long time ago I decided it and I think it was a laptop actually and I drew a footprint for it and I just added it and um, I have tested this it does work with the hardware I just had to write some software around it and in case you want to use a much easily and much cheaper available uh, through hole version I added the through hole pads here so you can get one of like the Vichy uh, IR receiver decoder sensors and just solder it there and bend it over whatever you want uh, on the bottom we have this nice fancy uh, battery tab clip thing that the battery slides into and like I said this is a CR2032 I added a second package for another different style SMD uh, IR receiver which um, it seems to be more widely available than this style but uh, this style is by far the lowest profile it's quite thin you can see there uh, but anyway I added a second pad on the bottom if you get the uh, different style version there's a soldering header here for um, this is serial programming now I only have this soldered for testing and debugging but once you're finished with the software and you're happy with whatever program remote codes you have programmed on here you can just desolder that or you can even use pogo pin uh, connectors to to like solder or to uh, to program this flash this using a uh, standard like UART serial programmer we have a cutout for the IR LEDs so it kind of sits flat ish uh, which is a standard like five millimeter uh, IR LED I don't think I'm driving this pretty hard I probably could get a little more power out of this but I was worried because it does sometimes seem to like lock up the processor if I decrease the series resistor on that a little bit too much uh, so I've opted to just kind of play it a bit safe but anyway we'll do a demo real quick and uh, show you how this exactly works uh, but yeah, this power switch is in the off position. There's a white silk screen to show you when it's on. So now it's on. When I click a button, it lights up the red LED to show you that you click the button. <laughs> and yeah, it's basically that. Uh, one other feature I forgot to mention, a, I opted for a new design for my ICSP header. That's for loading the bootloader onto the chip. Uh, so that's only used once and pretty much never again. So instead of dedicating like solder pads or anything to it, uh, on the bottom, they're just vias. Uh, basically, these are vias that are arranged in the ICSP header uh, pinout. And I have some silk screen to show you what pin one is. But yeah, you just I um, I soldered a like a pogo pin ICSP uh, spring loaded programmer header thing before in a past project and you just hold it against there very steadily as you flash the bootloader and then you just remove it after you're done and these pads don't take up really any extra room barely any so yeah that worked really well actually for flashing the firmware there was absolutely no issue with that uh, it would be interesting maybe in a future version uh, to have like a card edge connector somewhere I don't know in the corner or something and so that you can um, without having to solder you can flash over serial that would be way better than having this connector than that i have to desolder off when i'm done uh, but i'm going to leave this on for now so until i can fully develop the software for the uh the ir receiver Anyway, let's go test this out. I have a TV right behind me, a CRT Sony uh, TV that I, I've been using to play Duck Hunt recently. <laughs> because now that I have a CRT, I can play light gun games. Hey, but uh, let's just test this out. So uh, give me one sec to get that set up. Okay, so I'm standing, uh, I don't know, probably about like four to five feet away from the TV. Uh, this is a Sony Trinitron. It's one of those like flat ones. Uh, I have, you can obviously see the arcade machine that I, I built quite a while ago. Anyway, uh, we'll flip this remote on. It blinked once to show you that it's fully booted and whatnot. And uh, we'll hit the power key, which is this upper key here. And it just turned on right now. In a second, it will uh, hopefully fire up it's it's a CRT it takes a little while 
Okay, there we go. We are in video two. So, um, I have input select is uh, this upper right button. So if I click that, it goes to video three, four, and this is uh, just the, the tuner circuit, but I don't have an antenna plugged in, so we're not gonna get any uh, TV channels. Uh, up down is volume. So here you can see volume down, and then up is volume up. So just turn that down a bit. Uh, Left and right is channel uh, down and up. You can see channel one, channel 117, channel two. And uh, this is uh, just a hard power off button. So if I click that, it'll turn off. Turn it back on. Uh, let's just switch it back into uh, video two, I believe it was, and turn on my NES. And there we go. We are uh, into some duck hunt. Put this down. <laughs> I'm just gonna set that down right here. Uh, yeah. Let's just play a quick game. Try to do this. <laughs> this will be pretty interesting to try to do while filming. There we go. We'll play around real quick. Why not? I'm only standing about five feet away, so it's pretty easy to hit, even without looking down sights. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we'll just uh, switch this guy off. There we go. So yeah, this is the uh, Remote Duino Nano. Uh, if you guys do want to build your, your own, this is a far more... Use it. Let me just shut this off before I forget. So this is the far more usable version of the remote Duino. The larger one that I built before was more of like a test for myself, not made to be used seriously. I did add a little key ring to this because I thought that would be neat. Uh, so if you want to make like a little keychain, uh, fully Arduino IDE compatible, reprogrammable remote, all the design files for this are going to be uh, I'm going to put it on my hackaday.io page and uh, so there'll be a link in the video description down below and um, if you guys want to grab all the files or mess around with it, redesign something, whatever, I'll put them up for you guys to, to play around with. And once again, um, thanks for JLCPCB for uh, providing all these boards and everything, even if they couldn't sponsor this final video. Uh, this was just sort of my send off and uh, thank you to them. So anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.